flatworms. Both flatworms and roundworms have bilateral symmetry, which means that they can be divided along only one plane into mirror image halves. This bilateral symmetry, this bilateral symmetry is what separates them from the sponges and the cnidarians that we studied earlier. This major evolutionary step is what allows for the body to evolve different organs. The main difference between our flatworms and our roundworms is that our flatworms are acelomates, meaning that they do not have a true cloam. Our roundworms are pseudocelomates. Most flatworms are parasitic, living in the bodies of a variety of animals, while others are free living in marine, freshwater, or moist land habitats. Free living flatworms feed on dead or slow moving organisms. They extend a thin tube like structure called the pharynx out of their mouth. The pharynx releases enzymes that begin the digestion of prey. The food particles are then sucked into the digestive tract where digestion continues. Remember, there's only one mouth in flatworms. There's only one opening. Therefore, waste is also excreted through the mouth. It is in flatworms, like planaria, that we first see bilateral symmetry and cephalization, the localization of the sense organs in the head region. A pair of ocelli, light-sensitive eye spots, are located toward the center of the head. Lobes extending from either side of the head contain chemosensory cells. Planaria feeds using the protrusible muscular pharynx. The chemosensory cells on the lobes are used to locate the food. Through rhythmic contraction of the muscular pharynx, planaria pumps the food into the gastrovascular cavity with a siphon-like action. Some parasitic flatworms had, have modified feeding structures called hooks and suckers, which enable them to stay attached to their host. Some parasitic flatworms have a reduced digestive system and feed on the blood and other body tissues of their host. Other parasitic flatworms lack a digestive system in general. Because they're so thin, like a single layer of cloth, and are surrounded by the nutrients of their host's intestines, these parasites can absorb nutrients directly through their skin. Like sponges and cnidaria, flatworms do not have, an ex have a circulatory organs or respiratory organs. Because flatworms are so thin, their cells can use diffusion to move dissolved oxygen and nutrients to all parts of their body. CO2 and other wastes are also removed from cells by diffusion. Unlike sponges and cnidaria, flatworms have an excretory system. They have small tubes that run throughout their body. On the side branches of the tubes, there are these bulb-like flame cells lines with <coughs> there are these bulb-like flame cell lines with cilia that sweep water and excretory substances into the tubules. Because flame cells move water out of the body, they keep the flatworm from becoming waterlogged. In addition to the flame cells, flatworms also excrete waste products and maintain homeostatic water balance through their mouth. In most flatworms, the nervous system consists of two nerve cords with connecting nerve tissue that runs the length of the body. So along the length of the body, we see these two nerve cords and we see these connections in between kind of like a ladder running the course of the body. And the anterior head of the nerve cord is a swelling of ganglia that send nerve signals to and from the rest of the body. This ganglion is a group of nerve cell bodies that coordinates incoming and outgoing nerve signals. Some flatworms move by contracting muscles that are found in their body walls. 
Other flatworms use cilia found on the undersides to move. Mucus lubricates the worms and improves the gliding motion. Flatworms are hermaphrodites. They reproduce sexually by exchanging sperm and egg with, at fertilization in, in, with fertilization occurring internally. In marine flatworms, zygotes are protected in a cocoon and are released into the water where they hatch within a few weeks. Regeneration is a way that the flatworm may reproduce asexually. A planarian that's cut in half horizontally can grow a new head from the tail end or grow a new tail from the head end, forming two new organisms. To discuss diversity of flatworms, the first we'll look at is Turbularia. These live in marine or fresh water. They vary in size and color and body shape. We see these eye spots that can detect the presence or absence of light. Along the side are the auricles on the anterior part of the worm that are sensitive to chemicals. They may move with the head, they may move, the worm may move by moving their head back and forth trying to detect chemical stimuli coming from food. Trematoda, or flukes, are parasites that infect blood and body organs of their hosts. Here the life cycle of a fluke causing schistermiosis, where we see the fluke eggs clog the blood vessels causing swelling and, eventually, and eventual tissue damage. If you notice, two organisms are needed for the entire life cycle of this fluke. They need a snail host and a human host. The fluke larva bury into, the, into bare human skin and travel through the blood to the intestines where the development continues. The veins of the human digestive system are the home of our adult flukes. When wastes are passed out of the human body, fluke embryos and larvae leave. The embryos hatch if they reach fresh water. The larvae are free swimming and move to find their snail host. Inside the snail, the flukes grow and reproduce, then the larvae leave to enter the water, where again they can burrow into bare human skin. This is not common in the United States, however it is prevented by proper sewage treatment and by wearing proper clothing when wading or swimming in infested water. Cystoda parasites are adapted to life in the intestines of their hosts. Looking at the anterior end, we can see the scolex, a knob structure with the hooks and suckers that attach to the intestinal linings of a host such as a cow or a human. Behind the Behind the scolex is each individual section called a proglottid, each containing muscles, nerve, flame cells, and male and female reproductive organs. Proglottids, proglottids form continuously as new ones form near the scolex. Older ones are moved farther back and mature. After eggs in the mature proglottids are fertilized, the last segment with, devel with the developing embryos break off and pass out of the intestines. So a mature proglottid may break off and exit the host. Animals such as cattle might feed on vegetation or drink water contaminated by the tapeworm, and then the cycle of tapeworm growth is repeated. When eaten by cattle, tapeworms can burrow through the intestinal walls, entering the blood and eventually the muscle. If this infected beef is eaten rare or undercooked, human infection by tapeworms is likely. Tapeworm infections are uncommon in developed countries because these countries require beef inspections. <laughs>